GPT-4 has just been released and there's been some mixed feedback as to whether or not GPT-4 lives up to the hype. So in today's video, I'll be going over all of the new features and all of the new use cases that you have with GPT-4 compared to the previous large language models by OpenAI. And I'll also be going through some specific examples using the GPT-4 model and I'll be comparing the outputs to the previous GPT-3.5 model that is all available on ChatGPT. So let's go ahead and get started. Before we get started with the examples, let's take some time to talk about what makes GPT-4 different from GPT-3.5 and all of the other large language models. GPT-4 can solve difficult problems with greater accuracy thanks to its broader general knowledge and problem-solving abilities. So essentially, you'll be able to ask more complex questions to GPT-4 and you'll be able to get more complex answers from this model. And we'll actually be going through an example of this um, and I'll be comparing the outputs that I got with the previous GPT-3.5 models. The second thing that you're able to do with GPT-4 that makes it different is that GPT-4 is able to read and generate up to 25,000 words. So essentially, you have a much larger token limit compared to GPT-3.5. So that means that GPT-4 will be able to handle a lot more input and be able to uh, generate a lot more output for you. So if you're generating longer form contents, such as blog posts, articles, eBooks, uh, or fictional stories, you'll be able to do that easily with GPT-4 compared to the previous large language models. GPT-4 also allows you to write code in all major languages. Now, previous language models were able to do so, but I suppose that they have improved this feature, which allows you to write a much more complex code with GPT-4. GPT-4 also does better and more advanced math, so it can solve more complex math questions compared to GPT-3.5. One major differentiating factor between GPT-4 and all of the other larger language models is that GPT-4 understands images as inputs. Essentially, you'll be able to input images in GPT-4 and it will be able to understand the context and understand what is going on on that image. So the example that we saw in OpenAI was that you can enter an image of balloons that are on a string and you can ask it what will happen if these strings were to be cut. And because the AI is able to understand the context of that image, it will give you an answer based upon that image. This is a really interesting and new use case that's available in GPT-4 that you can use for a lot of different things. I saw that they did showcase a company which allows you to take pictures around your home or any environment that you're in and the AI will be able to assist you just from those images. So if you're visually impaired, you can use this um, AI tool to allow you to understand what's going on in your environment. So that's a really, really cool and new um, use case that's available in GPT-4. And lastly, GPT-4 is safer, so there's much more guardrails, which allows you to be able to use um, this AI in a way that is safe for everyone. So now that you know what makes GPT-4 different from all of the other language models, let's go ahead and run some actual outputs to see how it differs from GPT-3.5. The first differentiating factor between GPT-4 and GPT-3.5 was that you're able to get much more complex answers from GPT-4 and it's able to understand information or more complex subject matters easier. The first question that I asked GPT-4 was do human beings... The first question that I asked GPT-4 the first complex question that I asked GPT-4 was, do human beings have free will? And this was the answer in which we got back. As you can see, it's a pretty detailed answer. And they talked about several perspectives on this issue. So they don't just give you an answer. They talked about different ways of looking at this question. So as you can see, we got a pretty complex answer. For comparison, I ran the same input on GPT-3.5, which is the old model. And I asked the same question, do human beings have free will? And this was the answer in which we got back. As you can see, not as detailed and as complex as the answer that we got back from GPT-4. So this is just one example, but again, we can see that we are able to get much more complex answers from GPT-4. To test GPT-4, I asked it to now write the answers only using words that begin with A. And as you can see, it actually was able to give us an output um, just using words that begin with A, which is pretty difficult for anyone to do. Now let's go ahead and try the same thing on GPT-3.5. As you can see, GPT-3.5 was not able to do so. So you definitely are able to get a little bit more complex in terms of your inputs with GPT-4 to allow you to get um, more complex outputs. And it seems that the AI is much smarter and you're able to get much more content out of it, um, especially when you're dealing with more complex subject matters. 
Now let's test the second differentiating factor of GPT-4, which is its ability to write longer form content. GPT-4 now has the ability to read and generate up to 25,000 words in one shot. So let's go ahead and test this out for ourselves. So I've given it a very simple prompt of writing a 1500 word blog post using Markdown about how to make money online as a teenager. And let's see if we're able to write a 1500 word blog post in one shot using the new GPT-4 model. And something that is new in GPT-4 is that you get a table of contents. This was not available in GPT-3.5. So this is a very, very nice touch for you to have. And I believe you can click on that specific section and it will go to that section of the blog post. So that is really, really cool and a nice feature included in GPT-4. So you may need to um, just click continue if it kind of times out. I'm not sure if that's because GPT-4 is fairly new. So they are kind of limiting the use of it, but um. Yeah, just go ahead and click continue and you should be able to get more content. And while that's generating, I do notice that the format of this content is much better. Now, I did tell it to use Markdown, which allows us to get H1 and H2 tags, but it also included lists within the articles and tips that is really well formatted and makes the article much, much more easier to read. So that is a major difference that I've seen right away with this new model compared to the previous model. The previous model, you would have to tell it to include lists, include tips, um, to format it in, in a certain way so that we can then just copy it and paste it over onto our WordPress um, dashboard. But as we can see here, it's kind of doing that automatically. Okay, so the content has been generated and um, it actually looks really, really good. The first thing that I've noticed is the format, as I mentioned earlier, but also the content is really um, well written. And that's all from one very, very simple prompt. We didn't um, prompt engineer this by any means. It was a very simple prompt and I'm pretty impressed by the output quality that we are able to get back with GPT-4. Um, and I think that's going to be the main difference between this and compared to other GPT models. You wouldn't really have to give it too much um, inputs. I think it would be really easy for it to understand what you're talking about and give you very relevant content. As you can see here for this blog post, which talks about um, how to make money online as a teenager, there's a lot of really relevant content such as gaming and streaming. It talks about choosing a game, creating engaging content, growing your following. After your following grows, you can monetize your stream through donations, subs, and sponsorships, tips. So this is, um, I got to say, I'm really impressed by this blog post that we're able to get back here from GPT-4. So let's go ahead and actually copy this content. I just want to make sure what is the word count. Okay, so we went ahead and pasted in the content and it's about 1600 words. So we do get um, that 1500 word blog post in which we asked, of course, if we remove some of the formatting, it will probably be more around 14 to 1500 words. But again, as we can see, we were able to write a pretty decent blog post using GPT-4. Um, and we didn't have to also give it much instructions. It was able to pick up on that context pretty easily. So this is definitely a big difference compared to GPT 3.5 because it was a little bit harder to get longer content with GPT 3.5. And you also had to um, really prompt engineer to get better outputs. But as you can see, this AI is much, much smarter. And the only drawbacks that I could see is that it's much slower compared to GPT 3.5 Turbo. But again, um, I think it's okay if you have to wait a little bit longer to get better quality content. Another differentiating factor between GPT-4 and GPT-3.5 is that GPT-4 is really good at solving complex math equations. So let's go ahead and give this a try by entering a math equation here and seeing if it can solve that um, equation. And this is the answer in which we got back for this specific question. So it does seem like GPT-4 is much more suited to be able to solve complex math questions compared to the previous language models. And the last differentiating factor that we talked about was the ability to understand images by GPT-4. So essentially, you will be able to paste in an image into your chat box and the AI will be able to tell you more context or give you information about that image. Now, I don't think that feature is completely included right now. I think they're still rolling that out because I have seen some other videos of people trying to get it done, but it wasn't really able to understand the images. I do think that there will be an option here to upload an image or to even take an image if you're on your mobile phone, but right now that's not available. But for example, let's give this a try by copying a link address and we're going to head back over to ChatGPT and we're going to ask it to describe this image. Okay, so we can see here that um, the AI language model cannot directly access or view images from external websites. Describe the image, please provide a description or upload an image directly. So I don't know if there's an ability to upload images. Let's go ahead and copy this and see if we can paste it in here. 
I highly doubt that we would be able to do so. Nope, so that doesn't work. So I'm not entirely sure how we would be able to um, access the image features included in GPT-4, but it is available. Um, I just think right now it's not available as they continue to sort of roll out GPT-4. But as you can see, there's a lot of really powerful use cases included in GPT-4 that was not included in the previous large language model. So overall, I'm very happy and impressed with GPT-4. I think the ability for it to understand context and be able to give you high quality outputs much easier Easier will be the reason why this large uh, language model GPT-4 will be better than every other large language models that we've used before. Right from some of the examples that I did in this video, as you can see, it is able to give us very complex and very in-depth outputs with very simple inputs. And most likely it will just continue to get better. I think right now the only drawback is that it's a little slow, but I think that um, as they continue to roll it out, it will become faster and it'll become more powerful. So that's my review of GPT-4 and some of the new use cases included. Let me know in the comments below what you think of GPT-4. And also if you'd like to access and play around with GPT-4 for yourself, you need to get a chat GPT plus account. It's about $20 per month. And then you will have access to this new bottle, which is GPT-4. As always, I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. If you have any thoughts or any feedback, let me know in the comments below. Other than that, if you did enjoy the video, give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time, stay well.